Hello and welcome to another video as usual. My name is Jeffrey and this is the Infinity Universe. So let's get started. I want to talk about the MediaTek Helio G99. If you like, you call it the Ultra. If you like, you call it the Ultimate. They're both the same thing. If you don't believe me, please do a side-by-side -side comparison using Nano Review or you can use uh, All Round Review and see for yourself the same thing. Okay, so with that aside, I want to talk about like this SOC because it's making waves now, despite the fact that this is a close topic, at least to me. We've covered it last year on Telegram, on our Telegram channel. And I've, I've also covered it earlier this year on this very YouTube channel. Okay, when I talked about the pointless rebranding that MediaTek is doing with the Ultra and the Ultimate, whatnot. These are just marketing terms that were slapped on pre-existing SOCs to make it look as if people are buying something bigger, larger than life. But it is what it is. It's still the same SOC. Now, honestly, I actually considered this topic done and dusted until I stumbled across a post on Nairland and I saw that on Nairland, the person posted, it made it to the front page, actually a sponsored post on a leading Nigerian newspaper about how a phone with a MediaTek Helio G99 is the future of gaming. Now, ordinarily, I would have said this is just some marketing nonsense and I ignored it completely, but a lot of people were getting sold on that. And yes, I know some of them are marketers that were inserted into the comments to, you know, hype the product. All right. They do this a lot. It's not just Nairland. I'm just I'm using Nairland as a microcosm, you know, to to represent like the larger population, the larger society. But a lot of people are buying this Helio G99 nonsense. I'm calling it G99 nonsense. Some people are calling it G99 Ultra Ultimate. I'm calling it G99 nonsense. Even going as far as to put, you know, in a national publication that the G99 powered phone is the future of gaming. Now, imagine if it were a young person who has no idea how these things work and is very gullible, very vulnerable to this stuff, and then goes online and then sees something saying Helio G99, the future of gaming. What do you think? is going to do to that person's brain. That person's brain is going to be wired to see anything G99 as high-end, as high-tech, the future of gaming. I don't know if you're following me here. And, and, and I see this happen all the time. This is not the first time this has happened. This very same company has done this before in the past with Helio P22, P25s. Right, the Helio P35 SOC is branding them as flagships, as the best in the world. Whereas it is not so. And then you see people go and, and I, I tell them that you bought an entry level phone. They said, No, look at the marketing. Like, why are you following the marketing? It's why when I go out, I'm digressing. It's why when I go out to buy phones, I usually go out when I have all the time in the world to waste. And I go out and, you know, I have time come and entertain me and then I, I step into the store and then somebody is holding my hand and say hey hello bros come 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 don't you want to buy and then the first time I always ask them I follow them willingly and I say what's the SOC on this phone and what's the level of its performance that usually gets them <laughs> always all the time and this is what I keep encouraging people to do like don't just follow marketing don't follow marketers right these people who market it's their job they, they will market poop excreta feces if they have to it's their job and it is your job to protect yourself as a consumer so i've beaten around the bush now let's go back let's get back to the g99 and the waves you know it's sweeping through the public conversation everywhere g99 ultimate i know i know people personally i know people who are sold on this soc and believe that it's the best thing after sliced bread okay that they believe is the best thing so let's get started where did this whole g99 start actually you would have to go all the way back to 2019 when mediatek were trying to recover from the disaster that was the helio x series they were trying to recover their reputation you know some rep now qualcomm had at that period just introduced the snapdragon 700 series okay which was supposed to kind of like bridge the gap between the high end the standard 800 series and the mid-range standard 600 series so the 700 series was supposed to be smack in the middle between both and it came with a new type of micro architecture qualcomm put two cortex a76 cpus and six cortex a55 cpus 
bringing a very high level of performance that was never seen before to the mid-range market. And Qualcomm decided to do the exact same thing. They brought two Cortex-A76 CPU cores and six Cortex-A55 CPU cores. They put them, to, put them together. They got a Mali G76 MC4 GPU, very powerful GPU at the time. They added it on there, 64 megapixel camera support, ISP, and you know, a, a, a decent 4G modem. I think that was around uh, a, a CAT 15, CAT 16 modem that they put on that thing. And they named it the Helio G90 D. And they said, can you check this out? This is our new SOC. It, it offers the same level of performance as the Snapdragon 730G, which was the bomb at the time. And it, was, it also offered the same level of performance as the Snapdragon 720G as well, which would later replace the 730G. And people were like, wow. How much is it? It's cheaper than what Qualcomm offers. And boom, the G90 T became, you know, everybody liked it because this is 2019 now, right? Everybody liked it. And it, I think it made it well onto the Redmi Note 8 Pro and it sold like hotcakes. And that was where the G90 series began from 2019. 2020, they followed it up with the Helio G95, which is essentially the same thing as the G90 series. Not really much was changed. Right. In 2021, they then moved on to the Helio G96, which, in my opinion, is actually a step down in terms of performance from the G95. Because this one, yes, it kept the A76 CPU cores, uh, the two A76 kept the six A75s. It downgraded the, the, the GPU aboard from the Mali G76 MC4 to a Mali G57 MP2. Right, the G76 with four cores was downgraded to G57 with only two cores, and that reduced the graphical performance, the, the gaming performance, the graphics of the G96. To make up for that stuff, we are giving you people 108 megapixel camera support, which I felt like was a step back, but it didn't really matter. A lot of people liked it, a lot of people bought it, and it went on, right? So, this is where the G99 comes in. The G99 is a sped up version of the G96. If you've used a phone with G96 before, say a phone like any of the Redmi Note 11 series, for example, not the basic vanilla Redmi Note 11 now, but any of the Redmi Note 11S, Redmi Note 11 Pro 4G, if you've used any of those phones before, you would understand the level of performance of the G96. And the same thing is translating over to the G99. The G99 is a bit clocked from 2.05 to 2.2 gigahertz but 1.8 gigahertz increase in clock speed isn't really going to you you won't really it's on paper it's decent but in real life it's the gap isn't really all that far if you check benchmark tests you will see this to be certain the only thing is that they they moved on to a six nanometer process which would help with the heating and the battery consumption and it would improve efficiency a bit but the performance gap isn't really all that wide and you can see this in the fact that the, the G99, despite being new, still competes with all that Snapdragon 720 and 732Gs. It, didn't really, it doesn't really beat them in terms of performance. This SoC is a lower mid-range SoC comparable with SoCs from four years ago. Okay, four years. Do you know how long four years is when we're talking about tech? The G99 is lower mid-range from four years ago. What a lot of people are falling for right now is marketing. And if you understand how this stuff works, of course, marketing should have... But then, yes, if, 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 if this is getting traction, this oh, that means the marketing is working. And it's working on a lot of people, which is actually quite, for me, it's quite sad. Because they are marketing G99 now as the future of gaming. So if G99 is the future of gaming, what are we going to talk about, say, Diamond City 7200? What are we going to talk about, say, Diamond City 8020, 8050, 8200, 8300, 8250 was just released. Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2, Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 3, 8 Gen 1, 8 Plus Gen 1, 8 Gen 2, 8S Gen 3. What are we going to call those? That with all this G99 hype going along, 
what the g99 is is a basic lower mid-range soc i'll always say this at the call it self marketing if you want i have a list of top 100 smartphone socs it's actually top 200 but top 100 for seo purposes search engine optimization so that when people search for stuff nobody's going to search for top 200 they are going to mostly search for top 100 and they would see the article that's why I made it, I named it that way. And you can, if you go there, you'll see where the G99 is located. It is a lower mid-range, albeit at the higher end of the lower mid-range segment, but it's still a lower mid-range SOC. That is still what it is. All of them that were just released for Gen 1, right? Uh, maybe even for Gen 2, for example, Diamond City 6080, Diamond City 600, Diamond City 600, uh, 6300, Hideo G99, they are all lower mid range SOCs comparable with Snapdragon 732G and 720G, and possibly with the G90T from all those years ago. They are all within the same range of performance. So sometimes people come to me and they say, Oh, Jeff, I bought X phone and it's bad, and I say, No. I don't believe any phone is bad unless the phone has a defect but if the phone is working exactly as it was designed to work it is not bad it is at that level the g99 is lower mid-range and that is the level of performance it's going to give you if you know truly well that this thing is lower mid-range and you buy it yes and this is the level of performance i'm going to get you're going to go Ah, yes, this is why I bought it. But if you bought it looking for the performance of a high-end SOC, for example, you're going to be very disappointed. Just because it has 99 on the name doesn't mean it's up there. It's just a name. It's just marketing. It's a lower mid-range SOC with two Cortex-A76 CPU cores as the main performance and an aging Mali G57 MP2 GPU. I think I've, let me put this chart on the screen so you see the level of where the Cortex A76 is. Can you see it? A76. This is the level where it is. How can this level be the future of gaming compared to SOCs like mine, for example? Say mine using Cortex X2, for example, or some of the latest flagships using Cortex X3, Cortex X4. Or let's not even go that high. Let's talk about A710, A720. SOC is using that level of performance of CPUs and somebody is coming and telling you that an SOC with A76 CPU cores is the future of gaming? Get out of here, man. Seriously. Uh, with that, I've come to the end of this video. Like I said, no force, just straight into it, spitting it out as it is. I'll see you in the next one. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and share. It's small actions like this that help small channels like mine grow. I'll see you in the next one.